Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Orange and Brown Talk podcast here on a Tuesday. Dan Lobby with Mary Kay Cabot, and we are doing a Hey, Mary Kay edition of the podcast fresh off of draft weekend. Let's get right to it, Mary Kay. I thought this was a fun question, and I went ahead and looked up uh, some of the data as well. It comes from Molly from Lynnhurst. Hey, Mary Kay, just for fun, being that they are both about the same size with nearly identical 40 times. What do you think of the Cedric Tillman, Josh Gordon comparison that's being bandied about at the combine Tillman had better vertical and broad jump numbers than Gordon. And I looked this up, Mary Kay on the website, it's called mock draftable where you can put in a player's name and they bring up players at the position who are similar to that player. And indeed uh, one, two, three, four, five players down the list after our buddy, Muhammad Massaqua, who was second uh, Josh Gordon, 85.7% 85.7% comparable to Cedric Tillman. That's a very interesting comp, and I'm sure one that Browns fans would welcome if he becomes the player that that Josh Gordon was before, of course, his, his career got derailed. Well, Josh Gordon was perhaps the most natural uh, receiver that I had ever seen in Cleveland. Uh, you know, Amari Cooper is amazing, absolutely amazing, too. Uh, but he's right up there with where Josh Gordon was. Josh Gordon had uh, just real natural hands, natural route running ability. Uh, you know, his uh, he, he could have been a Hall of Fame receiver. He he really could have. He was one of the best receivers that I have ever seen come through these parts. So if Cedric Tillman is even three fourths of the player that Josh Gordon was and could have been from an on field talent standpoint, then the Browns have absolutely hit one out of the park here. If he can do those kinds of things uh, that Josh Gordon could do, uh, then, you know, then they have struck gold with, with said Tillman. So, you know, they're going to have to see how this actually works out. I think a lot of people forgot about Cedric Tillman because he was injured last year coming off of uh, the Tua tightrope ankle surgery that he had. They named it after, Uh, They name it like that after Tua because he had the same thing, uh, you know, I think when he was in college. And um, and so, you know, it's designed to help fix the, uh, you know, the high ankle sprain. And uh, and he was able to get back on the field. He missed six games and then fought his way back onto the field last year. Cedric Tillman did. Uh, But people sort of forgot about him. He had 12 touchdown catches in 2021. So the production is there. And I do think that he's going to be that red zone threat that Deshaun Watson is going to come to really love and rely on. You got me thinking when you were talking about Josh Gordon and more, if you could take like Amari Cooper's like brain and work ethic and just all the, that stuff, not now look, Amari is good and is fantastic in his own right. I don't want to take anything away from him, but if you could take that stuff and put it in Josh Gordon, he I can't imagine what his ceiling would have been because you go back and watch those highlights from 2013 and, you know, watch the Jacksonville game, watch that Patriots game just to watch him run. Like just looked so easy and he's just out there outrunning people. And it doesn't even look like he's running fast. Like it doesn't even look like he's working that hard to to outrun people. He was just a physical specimen. Um, And of course, unfortunately we all know that it just never worked out for him for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, if you would have put all of those Amari uh, traits and qualities, the 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 off-the-field intangible stuff into Josh Gordon, I'm telling you right now, like he would have been a slam dunk Hall of Famer. He had all the talent and ability to be a Hall of Fame receiver. And, you know, he he really didn't do all the things that you need to do to be great uh, because he was struggling back then with substance abuse, you know, self-admitted later as we came to find out. Uh, but, you know, he wasn't putting all the work in. He wasn't putting all the effort in. He was naturally physically just built and muscular and big. Uh, he just had, you know, soft, natural hands. He could get open. He was a great route runner. I mean, he just had it all. And uh, what a tremendous, tremendous waste of talent that was that he just couldn't get himself together, unfortunately, because I've really never seen any kind of a talented receiver like that, you know up close and personal uh, for the Cleveland Browns. It was just absolutely incredible. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it's sad that it turned out the way that it did uh, because again, he was, he, he had absolute hall of fame talent. 
Yeah. No, like, I, you know, I'll never forget. And I think it was 2014. He came back from a suspension and he was definitely not in shape. He was not the Josh Gordon that, that had broken out the, you know, the year before, but he went over a hundred yards in Atlanta and caught two touchdowns. Now his season derailed from there. I think it was two touchdowns, but it was just kind of funny to see him basically walk onto the field there and, and have a game like that. Now to spin this back to Cedric, um, you know, in reading a lot of the post-draft analysis, a lot of people really liked this pick. There were a lot of people that were excited about this pick. There were some people that thought maybe he was a better pick than his teammate, Jalen Hyatt. We'll, we'll see how that goes over the next few years. But when you look at Cedric Tillman, I mean, is, is this a guy that you believe and do you think the Browns believe could be like a number one receiver for them one day? Yes, I do think that. I really do. I think they're looking at him as the possible heir apparent to Amari Cooper. I think that that's what they think they possibly have in Cedric Tillman. And chances are he would have gone significantly higher had he had a good 2022. A lot of times when, uh, you know, when you have a dime-